I welcome you all to the session of thermal engineering basic and applied and in today's class we shall solve two problems one is from SI engine and second one is from CI engine. So, this is the first problem let me read out the statement of the problem first a spark ignition engine working on ideal auto cycle has the compression ratio 8. So, it is telling that the engine is a SI engine and it is working on the uh, it is working on ideal auto cycle because we have discussed that uh, we need to uh, compare several processes using an air standard cycle and for the SI engines we consider auto cycle for this comparison. Compression ratio is 8, the initial pressure and temperature of air are 1 bar and 35 degree Celsius respectively. The maximum pressure in the cycle is 40 bar for unit mass flow, it is given that unit mass flow calculate P, V and T at various salient points of the cycle that is pressure, volume and temperature. Number 2 is the ratio of heat supplied to the heat rejected it is given that we can assume the value of gamma equal to 1.4 and r equal to 8.314 kilo joule per kilo mole kelvin. So, if we start solving the problem now, so you know that uh, very beginning of this course I have discussed about the procedure of solving any numerical problem particularly for this course that we need to know what are the processes and most importantly we need to map all those processes in any thermodynamic plane. So, we have learned that if it is SI engine then we can have the PV diagram and if we try to map the processes then we know that this is 1, this is 2, this is 3, final point is 4. So, 1, 2, 3, 4 we have mapped all the processes. Let me tell you once again, you know we have not considered two processes that is the constant pressure intake and constant pressure exha exhaust. So, these two processes are thermodynamically same. So, we have not considered these two processes in this plane and we also have no need to consider this while uh, solving this problem. So, what is given you know it is given P 1 equal to 1 bar T 1 35 degree Celsius. So, it is to zero zero eight Kelvin. Now, we know P 1 and T 1 gamma is given 1.4 next what we can do first. So, this is what we can write uh, these are what we can write from the given data. Now, we need to know that it is given for unit mass flow rate. So, we need to consider we need to calculate pressure volume and temperature at various salient points of the cycle per unit mass flow rate. So, now we have discussed that we will be applying air standard you know. Uh, so, this is an air standard cycle which is used to compare the performance of this particular engine and we will be using ideal gas equation considering that the charge is like an ideal gas. So, you know we need to 
consider moles. So, number of moles equal to m by capital M that you have studied. So, this is per kg. So, it is given per kg of per kg or per unit mass flow rate. and then So, we need to calculate number of moles for this problem and it is m by m you know it. This m is we need to calculate pressure volume and temperature at different or various salient points for per unit mass flow rate. So, this is unit mass flow rate and this capital M is molar mass of the substance. So, this is molar mass of the substance and we are assuming this is as good as molar mass of the air and that is 28.97. So, if we go to the next slide what we can do at point 1. So, we know what we know pressure P 1 equal to 1 bar T 1 equal to 308 Kelvin and this V 1 that is nothing but N R T 1 divided by P 1. So, N we have already calculated number of moles 1 by 28.97 R is given T 1 and P 1 that we, we can see uh, 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 from, from the given value. And if we calculate it, so it is like this, it is coming 8314 into 308 and so this is 308 divided by 28.97 into 10 power 5. So, 1 bar that we are converting into uh, Newton per meter square and this is 1 and it is coming 0 0.889 meter cube. So, this is V 1 volume. Now, we need to go because we need to calculate pressure volume and temperature. So, pressure and temperature these two properties are given at point 1 we have calculated volume at 1. Next is point 2. So, at point 2. Okay. How can we calculate pressure P 2? So, if we go back to the previous slide, we have discussed so many times that this is the compression process 1 to 2 and that is modeled as the, uh, this is modeled by an isentropic process. So, P 2 P 2 can be calculated knowing the value of P 1 and that we have discussed so many times. So, P 2 equal to P 1 into compression ratio R C power you know gamma. So, P 2 by P 1 equal to V 1 by V 2 power gamma that is V 1 by V 2 equal to R C. So, if we go here, here compression ratio R C equal to V 1 by V 2 small V 1 by small V 2. 
So, this is V B D C and this is V T D C okay. and this R C is given 8. So, this is given 8. Okay. Next, what we can do? So, if we calculate it, it is coming you know uh, I am writing directly. So, P 1 this is 10 power 5. So, 10 power 5 into 8 power 1.4 and if we calculate it is coming like 18.37 bar. So, this is 18.37 bar 1 bar equal to 10 power 5 Newton per meter square. So, I am writing equal to 10 power 5 Newton per meter square. So, that we have calculated we also need to calculate what would be V 2. So, V 2 equal to very straight forward because V 1 by V 2 equal to R C. So, V 2 equal to V 1 by R C. So, V 1 by R C and if we calculate it it is coming as 0 0.1 triple 1 meter cube because V 1 already you have calculated that is 0 0.889 meter cube divided by R C that is 8 and we are getting like this. What about what about T 2? So, T 2 I am writing here is again T 2 equal to you know P 1 V 1 by T 1 equal to P 2 V 2 by T 2 or else we also can calculate T 2 by T 1 in terms of the compression ratio. right? So, P 1 V 1 by T 1 equal to P 2 V 2 by T 2 else we also calculate T 2 knowing the value of T 1 in terms of compression ratio. So, T 2 by T 1 equal T, T 2 by T 1 equal to V 1 by V 2 V 1 by V 2 power gamma minus 1. So, from there we can calculate. So, this is I am writing P 2 V 2 by P 1 V 1 into T 1 and if we put the values we will be getting 707.245 Kelvin that equal to 434.2 degree Celsius. So, we have calculated pressure volume temperature at points 1 and 2. So, remaining points are 3, 4. Now, you can understand that at point 2 spark plug switch is you know made to be on and combustion occurs and it is because of this process temperature as well as pressure increases. So, this P 3 and T 3 these are the maximum temperature and maximum pressure and temperature of the cycle. So, I am writing here you know that P 3 equal to P max and T 3 equal to T max. Right. So, pressure and temperature at point 3 are the maximum pressure and maximum temperature of the cycle fine. So, now uh, if we look as if we focus at now point 3. So, at point 3 what we can do? What is V 3? V 3 equal to V 2 right it is same because V 3 equal to V 2 equal to V T D C. So, once we have calculated V 2 0 0.111, so V 3 will be like this will be 0 0.311 meter cube. What would be P 3? That is very important because P 3 you know it is given the maximum pressure in the cycle is 40 bar and we have written P 3 is equal to P max that we know. So, it is 40 bar right. So, P 3 equal to 40 bar right that equal to you know 40 into 10 power 5 Newton per meter square I am writing okay. and what about T 3? T 3 equal to right. See you know process 2 to 3 is a constant volume process. Let me tell you once again because we are applying air standard you know ideal gas 
relationship air standard cycle we have considered to analyze this engine performance of the engine and we are using ideal gas relationship. So, process 2 to 3 is a constant volume process. So, from there we can calculate what would be the temperature at point 3. So, T 3 would be equal to P 3. So, I can write P 3 by T 3 is equal to P 2 by T 2. So, P T 3 is equal to P 3 into T 2 by P 2. So, P 3 equal to 40 bar T 2 equal to you know 14 to 10 power 5 P t equal to 18.37 into 10 power 5 that we have already calculated into 707.245 and it is coming as 1540 Kelvin or it is coming 1267 degree Celsius and finally, we need to consider point 4. So, at point 4, process 3 to 4 is modeled by an isentropic expansion process. So, what we can write is you know P 4 equal to P 3 into V 3 by V 4 power gamma, V 3 by V 4 power gamma. So, you know that uh, this is you know 40 into 10 power 5 into 1 upon R c power gamma, because V 4 equal to V 1 right and V 3 equal to V 2. So, we can go back to the slide V 4 equal to V 1 and V, v 2 V 3 equal to V 2. So, basically V 4 by V 3 equal to V 1 by V 2 that is nothing but R C. So, if we write here and R C equal to 8. So, if we calculate it would be coming as 2.17 into 10 power 5 you know Newton sorry this is Newton this is Newton okay. and R c equal to 8 that is given. So, this is equal to 8. Okay. So, P 4 we have got and what about V 4 that is nothing but V 1. So, that is 0 0.88 9 meter cube and T 4 again T 4 can be expressed like you know process is if we consider these two process process 4 to 1 it is not necessary that we have to calculate T 4 from you know knowing T 3 rather we also can calculate T 4 knowing T 1 because the process is constant volume process. But we also can calculate T 4 because T 4 is equal to T 3 into V 3 by V 4 power gamma. So, basically that way we also can calculate that we have used. Now, uh, several times while we have discussed about the thermal efficiency. So, this is as good as T 1 into P 4 by P 1 okay. and it is coming as I am writing. So, this is 308 into 2.17 divided by 1. So, it is coming as 670.32 this is Kelvin. So, now we have calculated pressure volume temperature at various salient points that is point 0.1, 2, 3 and 4. So, uh, you know uh, and we have identified all this process because we know. Now, next is we have to calculate heat supplied and heat rejection. So, let us go back to the problem statement. So, now, question is we have to calculate the ratio of heat supplied to the cycle to the heat rejection. Now, uh, if we would like to calculate it because you know this is the heat addition. So, this is Q out or Q rejection. 
and this is q in or cube addition. Okay. So, these two processes are constant volume processes. So, we need to calculate C v. What is C v? So, we can easily calculate now that is 0 0.2 heat addition and rejection. Okay. And you know that C V equal to R by we know that is M into gamma minus 1. We are using this you know formula that we have you know studied. Now, R equal to given 8.314 divided by M that you know 28.97 into 0 0.14. Right, and if we calculate it, I think 0 0.4 because it is given 1.4. Sorry, so this is 0 0.4 only. 0 0.4 only, and then what we if we calculate it, it is coming as 0 0.717. So this is CV. Okay, now what we can calculate is now. So for unit mass heat rejection. equal to C V into T 4 minus T 1 and that is 0 0.717 into 670.32 minus 308 and if we calculate it we are getting 259.78. Okay. So, this is the heat rejection that we can calculate and what about heat addition. C V into T 3 minus T 2. So, that is coming as 0 0.717 into 1267 minus 434 because 1267 is either you can use Kelvin or Celsius whatever it is. So, it is 1267 minus 434 uh, four, uh, four, So, either you can use you know T 4 in unit Kelvin or degree Celsius and accordingly T 3 and accordingly T 2 should be considered. Now, I have not written the unit that is very important because you need to know what will be the unit. Mind it these two quantities are calculated per unit mass. So, the amount of heat added to the system per kg kilo joule per kg or the amount of heat rejected from the system kilo joule per kg that would be the unit. So, you have to calculate. Now, if you calculate this is very uh, you know I am not going to write the uh, final value you can calculate and then once you calculate you also can calculate efficiency because you know thermal efficiency thermal efficiency would be equal to heat uh, let me. So, this is heat rejection that is I am writing Q out and this is Q bin okay. and we can calculate we can calculate the efficiency that is nothing but Q in Q out sorry Q in minus Q out divided by Q, Q in Q in minus Q out divided by Q in
Okay. So, this is the efficiency you can calculate after knowing the value of q out and q in from these two and the unit should be kilo joule per kg Kelvin per unit mass we are trying to express. Okay. Uh, unit, unit of this heat rejection and heat uh, addition should be kilo joule per kg because we are interested in per unit mass of the working substance. Okay. So, another problem we will be solving and I am telling you because you can calculate this efficiency would be coming around 56.4 percent. So, you can check whether you are getting this efficiency or not. Okay. So, then we have to move to the next problem that is this problem is taken from the CI engine. What is this problem statement? Let me read out once again in an engine working on diesel cycle. So, you can understand this is the CI engine because we need to analyze the performance of this engine by considering an air standard cycle and that cycle is diesel cycle. Typically performance of compression ignition engines is analyzed based on the diesel cycle. Inlet pressure and temperature are given 1 bar and 20 degree Celsius respectively. Pressure at the end of the adiabatic compression is 40 bar. The ratio of expansion that is after constant pressure heat addition is 6. Calculate the heat addition, heat rejection and efficiency of the cycle. Assume gamma equal to 1.4, C p and C v values the value of C p and C v uh, we can see th these values are given kilo joule per kg Kelvin. Okay. So, basically you can understand if we go to the previous slide. So, the C v that we have calculated that is you know that is kilo joule per kg Kelvin. Right. So, if we if we multiply it kilo joule per kg Kelvin into Kelvin so kilo joule per kg. So, that is why I told you repeatedly units should be kilo joule per kg. Okay. Very important because if you do if you forget to write unit then perhaps you know uh, credit will not be given you know full credit will not be given. So, uh, go to the go to the statement. So, you know that again if we start solving this problem. We need to map the processes in PV plane. And processes are like this. So, this is 1, 2, 3, 4. So you, can add, you can see the difference between the SI and CI engines. Here, the heat addition is at constant pressure instead of constant volume. So, this is Q in and this is Q out. Okay. So, if we consider several processes now process 1 to 2. Process is isentropic compression process. So, we know P, P 1 equal to right. So, we know that P 1 equal to 1 bar T 1 equal to 20 degree Celsius temperature. So, that is equal to 298 Kelvin. Okay. So, what we can write process 1 to 2 you know V 1 by V 2 equal to R C right equal to R C equal to P 2 by P 1 power 1 upon gamma right. Again, we are using ideal gas equations. So, equation. So, what we can write here? So, this is the compression ratio. Okay, and we know P two by P one because P one is given, 
and P2 that is given because pressure at the end of the adiabatic compression, pressure at the end of the adiabatic compression is 40 watt that is the second line of this problem. So, this is 40 watt. So, this P2 equal to 40 watt given. So, from there we can write you know V1 by V2 equal to RC because you can understand this is VBDC. and this is V T D C V 1 by V 2 equal to V B D C by V T D C equal to R C that is the compression ratio. Okay. So, this is equal to if we calculate it is coming as you know 13.9377. Now, you, we have discussed that pertaining to this particular type of cycle, you can understand during the constant you know pressure heat addition process, the process the combustion process is mimicked by a constant pressure heat addition process. And you can see that there is a change in volume during this process and that change in volume is from V2 to V3. So, the ratio of the two volumes is known as cut off ratio. So, the change in volume during the compression during the combustion process, the ratio of this you know volume is known as is known as the cut off ratio. So, if we go to the next slide, the cut off ratio is the ratio of volumes that is the volume after the combustion to the volume which is at the beginning of the combustion of the of course, working substance. So, V 3 by V 2 now we can write it like this V 3 by V 1 into V 1 by V 2. You know that V 1 by V 2 as I told you that V B D C by V T D C small V 1 by small V 2 equal to V 1 by V 2 equal to R C right. So, this is R C. And what about this? We can write this is R C divided by V 1 by V 3, right. So, this V 1 by V 3 is if I go to the problem statement, you know compression ratio we have already calculated that is 13.9377. So, this is the compression ratio we have already calculated, but it is given that the ratio of expansion that is after constant pressure heat addition is 6. So, you know that expansion is you know that it is as good as uh, V 1 by V 4 by V 3, but note it this is V 4 equal to V 1. So, the expansion the ratio of expansion that is V 4 by V 3 right after the conversion process, because after the conversion process we can see the process is 3 to 4 and that is the isentropic expansion process. So, there is a change in volume and that expansion you know the ratio of expansion is V 4 by V 3 since V 4 equal to V 1 that we can see from this PV diagram. So, V 4 by V 3 is V 1 by V 3. So, if we write it this is the expansion ratio or ratio of expansion. Okay. So, actually V 4 by V 3 equal to V 1 by V 3. Okay. So, that we have written and it is coming as you know uh, this is given 6. So, it is given as if we go to the problem statement it is given as 6 right. So, this is equal to 6. So, we can write equal to 13.9377 divided by 6. So, this is 2.3229. So, this is the cut off ratio and this is beta cut off ratio beta right. If we if you can recall we had defined this cut up ratio by this symbol beta 
Okay. Now, next stage is what about T 2, because we know the T 1. So, T 2 by T 1 equal to you know P 2 by P 1 power gamma minus 1 upon gamma. Right. So, this is you can understand this is 40 divided by 1 power 0 0.286 okay. and it is coming as 2.872. From there, then we can write T 2 equal to T 1 into this and T 1 into sorry T 1 into this So, T 1 into 2.872 and this T 1 is 298 Kelvin. So, eventually you are getting this is 841.508 Kelvin. So, this is the value of T 2 that is the temperature at the end of the compression process. You can understand that we are raising the temperature of the working substance that is fresh air and that temperature and pressure P 2 these two you know properties are good enough to self ignite the fuel when fuel is spread into the combustion chamber. Okay. Now, if we go to the process 2 to 3. So, process 2 to 3 is very important process that is the you know combustion process. So, I am writing here process 2 to 3 that is the constant pressure heat addition. combustion process right. So, this is a constant pressure heat addition process okay. and you can understand that we can write T 3. So, T 3 minus T 2 equal to T 3 that is the T max. In fact, I should write T 3 equal to T max sorry T 3 equal to T max. So, T 3 equal to constant pressure process. So, T 2 into V 3 by V 2. So, T 2 we have already calculated right 841.5. 508 into V 3 by V 2 that is the cutoff ratio. So, this is the cutoff ratio that is beta. We have already calculated that is 2.322 and we are getting it 1953.974. So, this is Kelvin. Okay. T 3 we got and finally, we can consider process. So, process 3 to 4, 3 to 4 which process it is that is isentropic expansion process. So, we know T 3, we know P 3. So, we need to calculate T 4. So, T 4 is equal to T 3 into V 3 by V 4 power gamma minus 1 that is what that is what I was telling in the context of the solution of previous problem. So, it is not necessary that we have to use I we can calculate T 4 knowing T 1 because the process is constant volume process also we can calculate knowing T 3 using this relation. So, this is you know uh, V 4 by V 3. So, you can understand that uh, this is given right v 4 by v 3, if we go to the problem right. So, statement now T 3 is equal to 1953.974 right into v 3 by v 4 right. So, what is v 4 that is v 1 right. 
So, if we if, if we know v 3, we know uh, v 1. So, directly we can put the value of v 3 by v 4 right and if we calculate it then we can uh, easily get the value. Okay. So, uh, this would be you know v 3 by v 4 power gamma minus 1 that is 0 0.4 right. Now, let me tell you one thing uh, if we go to the previous slide because so cutoff ratio is known if we go to the previous slide v 1 by v 2 is also known right. So, let me write here this v 3 by v 4 equal to v 3 by you know v 2 into v uh, v 2 by v 4. So, this is v 3 by v 2 into v 2 by v 1. So, this is the cutoff ratio beta and this is the 1 upon R c compression ratio right. So, we can directly put the value of v 3 by v 4 knowing the value of beta and 1 by R c that we already know. So, we can calculate what would be T 4 from this and if we calculate T 4 then what we can do you know we can calculate heat addition. So, next part is heat addition see in the previous problem we could write heat addition per unit mass of flow of the working substance that is C V multiplied uh, with T 3 minus T 2, but here it would be Q in C P into right T 3 minus T 2 and heat rejection Q out that would be equal to C V into T 4 minus T 1. So, again these two quantities are expressed per unit mass flow rate. Okay. We know C P and C V because these two values of C P and C V are given. T 3 we know that is T max we could write T 2 in the last slide we can calculate T 4 if by putting the values and we also know T 1. So, we know all these things from there we can calculate what is the amount of heat being added to the cycle and what is the amount of heat being rejected from the cycle to make the you know process or to make the processes to be executed in a cyclic manner. Now, unit should be as I told you kilo joule per kg. So, unit should be kilo joule per kg and we also can calculate thermal efficiency that is nothing but Q in minus Q out divided by Q in. So, this is Q in. Okay. So, to summarize today's uh, class, we have solved two problems because in the previous few classes we have discussed about the thermal efficiency of both SI and CI engines. Today we have taken two examples to illustrate our you know understanding on these two cycles and we have solved these two problems and we could calculate their thermal efficiency. Not only thermal efficiency because to calculate thermal efficiency of both SI and CI engines we had seen that we need to calculate pressure and temperature at various salient points and for that we had to use you know ideal gas equations. So, with this I stop here today and we shall continue our discussion in the next class we shall move to the next module of this course. Thank you. Mm -hmm.